<laughs> yeah, I try to get everything to fit in. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say a pleasant good evening to all of you. First of all, to thank uh, Mr. Bobby Morris, the Venerable, who of course has been with us for many, many years as a supporter, candidate, MP, parliamentary representative, that is, and advisor for the party. And nobody can question his commitment as nobody can question your commitment to the Democratic Labour Party. So, as we can see, so many of you have turned out tonight. Tonight, I don't intend to be very long. They told me not to be long anyway, but I am a little bit under the weather myself. So, I am not going to be very long, and I am happy that Dr. Ashwick did everything that I uh, would have normally had done in explaining the Democratic Labour Party's economic policy and why we are not pursuing other types of policies. There are just one or two things that I want to say this evening that I think um, are important, things that are important for you to appreciate and understand as we prepare to go into this election period. This is probably the last meeting, I believe this is the last meeting that we will have before the new year in terms of uh, this type of setting. And it means that as we repair to the Christmas holidays, we have to bear in mind that very soon around the corner, by arithmetic, by attrition, and certainly by the will of the Prime Minister, a general election is going to be called and fought in Barbados. And as you would have heard from many of the speakers tonight, including my good friend Dr. Essie, who just spoke, this election is going to be not about the personalities per se, even though there are some of those that we will be speaking about, it really will be about the country. And it is really about the choices that we as Barbadians have to make about the future of Barbados. We have encountered, as you have heard and will hear repeatedly, the worst possible set of economic conditions the world has known in a hundred years. That is not easy. And the impact on Barbados has been almost immeasurable. It has been massive. And that impact has been even greater because of our openness and vulnerability and our particularly dependence on the global economy. I said it in Parliament last Tuesday, maybe they say when the United States catches sneezes, we catch the cold. But if the United States got a cold, then you will only expect that we'll probably get bronchitis or something of the sort. That is ready to put it in street parlance. The reality is that we are heavily dependent and open to the vulnerabilities of the global economy. And the larger the decline in the global economy, particularly in our trading partners, the more impressive the impact on Barbados. And this is not something that recently developed. This is something that has been going on for hundreds of years. Our history first as a slave state, and then as a post-slavery colony caused us to be framed in such a way structurally as to be an outpost of the colonial empire. And even though those relationships have changed, we've become independent, as we call it in inverted commerce. Our economy is still very much linked to the global economy. We are still highly dependent on tourists to come here, on foreign investment, on international business, the things which we purchase, which you like to have, your car, your clothes, even your toothpaste. We are dependent on other people to supply. And it means, therefore, that as a small country with very limited resources, we have to find ways in order to survive. And we have to survive under normal circumstances. But it is even worse when the global economy is weak and struggling and fraying away at the seams and recovery is not as sure as we would want it to be. 
So as we repair into Christmas, understand what you're dealing with. That this Democratic Labour Party, which has been nicknamed the party of recession, not because we cause recessions, but because we are called upon to manage recessions. And we, and we have managed recessions, whether it is the 19, early 1970s oil crisis on the barrel, whether it is the 1991 crisis, global crisis, oil crisis on the Sandyford, or now on the Thompson and Stewart. We have managed crises with poise and dignity, knowledge and understanding. And we've done it with a calm assurance, knowing that when you frame the correct policies for your country, when you have charted a course, when you have explained what you are doing and why you are doing it, the people will eventually understand. If there is one thing that we were criticized in 1991 for doing, it is not explaining what we were in fact doing. There's no doubt now, historians will tell you, Bobby and the others, there's no doubt that what we did in 1991 was the correct thing to do. We got punished for it because everybody is normal human behavior. People like things to be good. They like to have a lot of money in their pockets. Everybody wants a job. Why shouldn't they want a job? Why shouldn't they want to be comfortable? Why shouldn't they want to be elevated from their state of poverty? They ought to. And if people are hurting in certain ways, it will be reflected sometimes electorally. On this occasion, however, we've explained our strategy and our strategy is very clear. And as Dr. Eswick has said, and as others have said, we have sought to maintain stability in the Barbados economy by protecting that thing which is foremost. We did it in 1991 in a different way. That is to protect the dollar of Barbados. Erskine Sandiford was accused, vilified, ridiculed as being too stubborn, sometimes too ignorant, they say. But we stayed the course that we would not devalue the Barbados dollar, that we would maintain stability in the Barbados economy, because anytime the Barbados dollar, Barbados dollar is devalued, instability will occur in this Barbados economy. We have come on this occasion, and we've done the same thing. But it is not small wonder that the forces that we faced in 1991 have now coalesced and raised their ugly heads in 2012-2011 to say, as Dr. Eswick has said, that we must take a reckless approach to economic management, that we should cut taxes for everybody that we can cut taxes for, that we should reverse every policy of the Democratic Labour Party to promote stability, that we should give people money in an economy which they themselves claim is broke. They said the economy is broke, but that the government should spend $338 million in foreign reserves. I don't know how it is possible to spend money when you don't have it. Either you have the money or you don't have it. But they have said that we should spend this money, give everybody a free time to go into town and to do what they want and spend money as they like. You have foreign reserves, use them up. But ladies and gentlemen, you have heard and I want you to listen to the message very carefully and take it abroad. The things that we have done, we've not done them because we are spiteful or because we don't like Barbarians or we don't want them to have money. We have done it because we know that stability now means prosperity in the future. supermarket, an ordinary housewife, a single parent, a father, an individual, to buy an item. And he says, you know, this item is expensive. It very well might be expensive. He will pull the money out and he will pay. She will pull the money out and she will pay. But what if that person goes to the supermarket and the item is not there? The same person who is complaining about the price, 
will probably slash your throat because they cannot get the type of toilet paper they like or hand towel, the type of soap they like, the type of detergent they want. And you know why they won't be able to get it? Because there will be no foreign exchange in the central bank to give to the commercial banks so that merchants can get foreign exchange to buy the goods that we must import, that we like to use. And that is why we have done what we have done. And we make no apologies, ladies and gentlemen, for doing it. We empathize, we sympathize that some of the measures have been tough. But the best deal goes through the hottest fire. And Barbadians know that whilst they may be weeping in the night, some discomfort, that joy, joy must come in the morning. And therefore, we are on a course to ensure that when that global economy picks up, that Barbadians are there to take advantage. And how have we done it? We are now starting the restructuring process in the Barbados economy that ought to have been started under the Barbados Labour Party, under the great economic leadership, so-called great economic leadership of Arthur and the others. But they didn't do it. They didn't restructure sugar. They didn't restructure energy. They did nothing in manufacturing. I remember very clearly, Evelyn Grace is here, he was a foreign minister of trade, and he can tell you. In 1991, when we brought the program we brought, and we said we were going to shift the emphasis of concessions to the manufacturing sector from being up front to being at the back end. You export and then claim, rather than getting the concession up front and then going to manufacturing. At the end of the day, within the next two years, manufacturing output and exports increase by almost 17%. We know that. So we know where strategic investments in terms of concessions and waivers ought to go. We know this from practice. This is not new. We have governed Barbados in recession before and done it well. Others came along at the back end and got the benefit of it. We laid the wicket, they played on it. But we are not laying the wicket for them to play on this time. Because we are saying to the people of Barbados, those who have prepared must be given the opportunity to play their innings and play completely. This is not one day cricket, ladies and gentlemen. This is a test match. It is for the best players. It is for the top quality players. Not a fellow who's going to come and swipe with a few tax, tax cuts here and tax cuts there and privatization. I'm not going to touch that because David has dealt with that, I think, in the best way it can be dealt with. I just want to make these few points before I close. The first is this. That we have in our country, as I said, to maintain the stability by ensuring that we have enough foreign reserves in our account. Very shortly, in a few weeks, as David will tell you, the Democratic Labour Party government has to look for 30 million dollars in January, yes, to pay for Her Majesty's Prison Dodds, also known as the ONS Arthur Correctional Facility. We have to look for 30 million dollars. I name it after. I believe that the Prime Minister and the Cabinet should do Mr. Arthur the gracious thing to name the prison after him. It is his prison. It is his legacy. With Grant, the Adams was known for adult suffrage. Barrow was known for the great social and economic reforms. Tom Adams for the international business sector, we are told. Erskine Sandiford for defending the dollar. David Thompson for promoting the just society more than just an economy, a society too. And Arthur is known for the prison. That is his legacy, a prison. Name it the ONS Arthur Correctional Facilities. Exchange or reserves, either way, to 
not here for Mr. Arthur's prison. I don't know even know if he has toured up there. Because I believe that Marshall opened it just before the election, Dale Marshall. I don't know if Owen has ever been in there. He might actually like it if he saw inside of it. I understand it's a well-appointed facility. It's a little gate, and he can maybe fit through. They get, you know, they have taken to this thing of making fun of me. They put up these pictures on the internet about my size. I am pretty comfortable with how I am. Yes, I may need to lose a few pounds, but I can tell you this now, and I want you to say absolutely nothing when I say it. You can repeat it though. <laughs> that if I had a choice between looking like me and looking like Owen Arthur, I would choose me any day. So for me, then if you had a choice between looking like me and looking like how he look nowadays, how you would choose me any day. Now moving right along, let me get back to the point. We have to get that prison paid for. That is one of the missions of the DLP because we have to restructure that. We have to restructure that operation because as David decided, that is not no real time goal. That is a nut and it's not even a good nut either. We have to pay for it. And when you have big bills like that to pay, you have your debt to service. You have goods and services to buy from overseas. You need to have foreign exchange reserves. You can't pay for it with major money. As much as we love our money and as pretty as it is, nobody's going to accept it internationally. You have to have US dollars or some other international trading currency, pounds or something of the sort. So the focus in Barbados can't be on giving people extra money to go in town as Clay Maskell and say at some town hall meeting, a fella could get a haircut. What is a haircut going to contribute to earning foreign exchange in Barbados? The biggest set of rubbish. Yes, you want people to have a chance to make themselves better. I struggled down to the Hennessy Artistry Show last night. This is in a country in which they say people are suffering so badly. More than 15,000 people were down there enjoying themselves as well they should. Because if you have the money to buy a hundred dollar ticket or to spend three hundred dollars to go into VIP to get brandy and where else did it share up down there? I had none of it because I I didn't want any of it. I was just observing to see how much back dollars I could get in. <laughs> so what happened if on the stage they called to me but I wanted to see what was going on down there. Just as the night before leaving my constituency event, I went to the line Pelican for all tournament. And when I arrived, you should see the bees swarming around me like honey. All of them, Motley and Rudy Grant and Trevor Prescott, wanting me to add value to them. I tell them I'm going down in the crowd here with the fellas from down by my head and down in the in the stands with the fine and all VIP. I go in the stands here with the regular folk. Y'all are free to join me if you want, but I go in down here where I am frightened for people going like what I'm for people down there. I, I went to walk all up there again. There were about ten to twelve thousand people in there. They paid to get in. They went in the town, they buy dress and hair doing shoes a lot of small people get business down in town and this is a country that they say is falling apart people are broke sucking salt belly to back this is what going on is walking about trying to describe Barbados because I don't know if that's what he sees when he gets up in the morning when he look in the mirror I don't know what he is describing about people in Barbados because I don't see anybody walking around Barbados looking like that 
So we have to do all the things we have to do. We have to restructure the Barbados economy. We have to reduce our energy bill by having consistent energy policies geared towards alternative energy. We have to improve manufacturing. Dennis Kelman is doing that. Looking for niche markets. Looking for efficiencies in manufacturing. Trying to reduce the import costs. Looking for ways people can export. We have to look, as Dr. Exwick is doing, to reform agriculture. Are you aware that the consultations that the Ministry of Agriculture had only this year on agriculture are the first real set of serious consultations we've had nationally? in Barbados and agriculture. Ask James Small, he's sitting down there, he can tell you. So this is what is happening in Barbados. They've given Minister Seeley a lot of lashes about tourism. First they say we need to diversify the market, he did that. Then they say, oh no, that was not the strategy they meant. You really should go and try to diversify the traditional markets. He went and he did that. All down the west coast of Canada with West Jet, Jet Blue, out of the west coast, the Midwest of the United States. We have done every possible thing that we could do in the circumstances to keep this country on an even keel. And I believe that we have done so relatively successfully. So as you go into the holidays, I urge you to come back out. Fighting faith. Fighting faith. Understand that we are in a battle for a country. They want to take the country for their own benefit, personally and otherwise. As I said in Parliament, and I will say again, those who are walking past the Treasury, winking at it, and blowing soft kisses, I love you, I'm coming for you next year. I saw one fella try to hug up the Central Bank. Those who want to make love to the Treasury, we are not allowing you to get in there because you're not going to rape and defraud the taxpayers of Barbados for your own personal benefit. Why the rest of me in Barbados sucks out? It will not happen. And it means that you have to get up and get going whenever that bell is rung in this country because we have to stick with the Dems. We are sticking with them. Again, ladies and gentlemen, good night and God bless you.